But good morning and welcome to Stroke of Genius Podcast, Executive Experience. I'm your host, Aaron Alba. I get a guest today that just ended your watch, gets me just jazzed, pumped. And I, I think because it's impact. We live our lives for impacting and helping people. We are servant leaders. I'm going to introduce you to a person today that is going to that is going to change your life like she has mine. So let's get right into it. Let me uh, bring her online just a minute. The Stroke of Genius podcast, hosted by brain aneurysm and stroke survivor Aaron Avila, sharing the experiences of survivors and CEOs. This is your destination for inspiration. And this is the one I talked about, the amazing Sherry James. Hey, Aaron. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here with you today. This is going to be great. I'm excited. You know, Sherry, uh, we are talking in that room, and I am honored. And I hate I that word is up for you in, in, the, in our industry. I'm just a baby in the industry. But... I, you know what they say, I'm honored, I'm honored, I'm honored. Well, you know what? I'm honored. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Let's start out here. Introduce yourself. Introduce okay. who you are. I will. Uh, I am the founder and chief experience officer for Phoenix Speaks Incorporated, which is a coaching, consulting, and training company. We focus on obviously teaching people how to become and sustain and remain mentally wealthy. Um, I also founded an organization called 2020 Lives Changed, which is a nonprofit. Uh, the goal of that nonprofit is to preventatively uh, prevent suicide by teaching children as young as five years old how to um, articulate their emotions, how to talk about their feelings before they turn to things like self-harm, uh, violence, and suicide. And my name is Sherry James, uh, and I also just launched a TV show called Creating Mental Wealth with Sherry James. Uh, and that will be showing on both linear and streaming TV later this year. You know, that's your leg brain. You, we're going to, we're, I really want to focus on both those. Number one, your business. We'll talk about that in a second. But number two, also your purpose. And now preventing suicide and reaching out to people and not be people as we get that purpose. But before we start, that you know this person, I see. Can you see her online? Yes. Good morning, Ms. Shara. Thanks for joining. Yeah, you know, it's, it's amazing that now how, how we, our lives just leave, if you allow. My son the other day, I was visiting my son yesterday. Mm -hmm. He said, plan to push. You don't don't force things. Just plan. When you don't know what to do, sit back, relax, let the universe do its thing, and just plan your way. And you know, to what happens. But you know, I just have, now you do a speaking service, which is Phoenix Speaks. Yes. Tell me a little about that and what you do. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, uh, so Phoenix Speaks has has kind of uh, it's morphed over the years. So I've been a public speaker for um, I think if we count. Uh, wow, probably almost 20 plus years I've been doing public speaking. And so I would teach um, converse, or have conversations, a keynote sessions about diversity, equity and inclusion. Um, the PMP behind my name stands for Project Management Professional. So I've been certified to do that um, and to teach that um, for since 2009. Um, and so Phoenix Speaks is just the way that I uh, manage my speaking business. So when people do want to hire me for conferences and keynote sessions and um, conventions and things like that, then we work through Phoenix Speaks. Um, and we also do training classes, which has been so much fun this year, Aaron. I've been able to, to teach some clients about how to effectively manage diverse teams. 
um, because people say they have this diversity, equity, and inclusion strategy. Uh, and sadly, a lot of people just all of a sudden ended up in that industry just doing that work. I've been doing it for well over 20 years. So uh, that's kind of some of the work we do at Phoenix Speaks. Now, curious, I mean, you're using speaking to impact lives and train teams. So the problem you're seeing out there is what? Could you please repeat what you're seeing out there in the corporate world as a problem? Absolutely. Um, so it's kind of twofold, Aaron. So what we what we've been researching lately the past three years, but also what I experienced for the 30 years that I was in corporate America is that there is a level of stress and anxiety and depression that exists, especially the higher up you go in the ladder, right? So the higher up you move in leadership, the less people you have to talk about your emotions, the fewer audiences you can trust uh, to talk about things like anxiety and depression. Uh, you're almost shamed into this silence because people will have conversations with you and say, you can't be stressed out. You're the CEO of a multi-million dollar organization, right? Um, as if one of those has anything to do with the other. We're still human beings. We still struggle with uh, our emotions and being able to uh, talk about those. Um, but And so at Phoenix Speaks, we make sure that teams, individuals, college students, uh, and C-suite individuals all have the right capabilities and the right toolkits so that they can succeed in corporate America by understanding that they've got to keep their mental wealth bank account balanced. Um, and so we talk about that um, in whatever way is, is relevant, right? So if it's a university, if it's a college, uh, we also incorporate a lot more about their financial management because no one really teaches our children how to manage money anymore, right? Or if they ever did. And so we, we, we find a way to teach them about balancing their checkbook as well as balancing their mental wealth bank account. And so uh, it's pretty awesome to be able to teach as many people as we have so far um, and especially what we have planned for 2023. It's awesome to teach valuable tactile skills that people can use right away yeah you know that is really awesome because i come from a space of stroke obviously and i'm going to say almost 100 percent of people that have stroke they didn't know they have the warning signs, but didn't know they were why because they have not educated in school so i'm so proud of you for getting out there and hitting the ground floor where, where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. You could teach children to be aware of mental wealth, mm -hmm. mental health. They're, you'll be in touch with their emotions. Absolutely. You're, you're, you're changing a planet at that point. Thank you. I'm trying. I'm trying my best. One heart at a time. That's all I can do. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll conti continue to do that as long as God sees fit. So I'm excited. I'm excited to be here. And as a stroke survivor, um, this is even more important. So to be a part of this uh, podcast with you, um, because I do remember a time right after my stroke in 2015, where I thought I would never walk again. I would never be able to do the speaking engagements. Um, and uh, I prayed about it and I said, God, I don't know what my purpose is yet. I didn't know yet in 2015, right? I was still working in corporate America, doing all the things uh, when I had my stroke. Um, and I'm so excited to stand here and say that I don't have any like permanent damage from my stroke. Um, and so it was one of those things, you know, people, you hear stories about kids in college and they're like, I drank too much. And they're like, if I just can live through this, I'll never drink again. Um, and I remember, you know, in, in the therapy session trying to walk and there was a guy that uh, was 94, Aaron. This guy was 94 and we had PT at the same time every day and he would get on this bike and ride just like go. So and he'd look over at me and call me this whippersnapper. He's like, oh, you wish you could do this, don't you, you little whippersnapper? Yeah. And he was one of the best motivators that I think I found in that entire like 16 weeks that I was healing. Because that guy was like, you can't do this, can you? And I was like, no, I can't. He's like, yes, you can. Just keep trying. Just keep at it. You'll get it. So the day that I finally was able to get both legs to move on that on that on that bike, uh, he 
you know, celebrated, all the other nurses celebrated. It was a great moment that I'll never forget, right? Um, and so I made that promise. If I was able to get up and grace stages again, I would do it in a manner that would touch lives and, were, and you know, do work that was bigger than just me. Yeah, you do a ton of shit. I'm being totally honest with you. And I mean, I try to make it pretty clear in our communications. I have a memory just that I forgot you had a stroke. That's a, that, 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 that makes me even more brother sister than we were before. I forgot you said that. Yeah. yeah. Actually, so, I've had, uh, we've had a, a one stroke and two TIAs. Um, and I'll tell you something that I don't know if you, you knew, because um, I know I did it as a stroke survivor. Uh, the last time I was in the hospital with what I thought was a stroke was actually what's considered a hemiplegic migraine. Um, and a hemiplegic migraine, it, it mimics a stroke. So any part of your body can become paralyzed, anything from just your eye or your finger um, to an entire hemisphere of your body. Um, and it literally 100% mimics stroke, except it's temporary. And when the migraine passes, um, so does the effects, right? So does the, uh, the paralysis. And um, thank God to uh, amazing, amazing neurologist that I already was on board with that I, you know, for migraines. Uh, because when I was in the hospital, they could find no reason for it. They were like, we don't know, you know, there's no sign of stroke on your, on your scans, um, and my neurologist found it at, like instantly. She's like, yep, it's a hemoplegic migraine. Um, and so by the grace of God, you know, I was able to, you know, recoup and, and recover from that. So, yeah, I'm a survivor, too. Um, that's why this was such an important show for me today. Wow, that is amazing. I, can't, I need to ask you an agreement. And I forgot. But you were going to come on and help it's a story to my stroke survivor community. That's perfect. But they do want to know, repeat again what that thing is that's like a stroke. Because I Absolutely. Know. Sure. It's called a hemiplegic migraine. So hemiplegia meaning just loss of movement from any portion of, of your body. Um, and like I said, it is not something that you know, you don't know it's coming. You don't necessarily get an aura like you do before, you know, a stroke sometimes. Um, mine, both of them, all of my strokes and this migraine always tend to happen to me while I'm asleep. So trying to get to the hospital in enough time to determine how long ago it happened, you never know, right? And so we know how important it is to receive immediate treatment if you are experiencing the signs of a stroke, uh, but you don't feel those if you're asleep. And so it's, it has been challenging each time. But with the hemiplegic mi migraine, the headache was so uh, severe. It was much worse than even one of my regular migraines um, that that caused them to kind of look for something different. Uh, and that's how my neurologist figured out that it was hemiplegic uh, migraine as opposed to another stroke or TIA. That is really, I'm glad you shared that because Anybody out there that's watching it live or on the replay, please take your headache serious. The more they could be a warning sign. Absolutely. But they want to kind of touch a little bit on that about finding your purpose in your fight or finding your purpose in your in your struggle. Yeah. In your hardship during life. You have a struggle. But tell me about something else that occurred that led you to your purpose. And you're, it's about your father. Please tell the story. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so interestingly enough, so I was on a, a, a show a couple of days ago, and I realized I probably want to re revamp the way I tell my story because I did have a, a very traumatic childhood. My dad did die by suicide when I was seven. My mom died by what I call the slowest suicide when I was 27. I'm an only child. And um, but I never let anyone know that. I still did all the things that I dreamt I would do. I traveled the world. I worked and made my way up the corporate ladder. Um, I did all of those things um, and it felt amazing. It felt fulfilling. Um, but there was always something that was missing. I always wanted to go above and beyond and coach my teams, which in a lot of cases in corporate America, uh, that's not what you're expected to do. You just have to get a result. You know, that personal relationship, nobody's got time for that. Just get your teams to work, get these projects going. Um, so, you know, my my 
my finding my purpose and my storm probably began with my stroke uh 2015 it caused some significant strain on my marriage i was married at the time um and my ex-husband did not necessarily know how to handle a stroke survivor did not know how to deal with the responsibilities of taking care of a an adult human right uh, we had my son also already at the time um, but that probably is the beginning of the storm. Uh, it's very interesting because it took me to have a stroke before I would even have conversations about my childhood. No one knew. I never told anyone. I kept it as a secret. There was so much shame that I just carried it around with me my whole life. And after the stroke, I was unable to filter those thoughts out anymore. My brain was literally just trying to remember how to walk and remember how to speak correctly and do all of those kind of basic functions that sadly we all take for granted. Um, and during that, I, you know, it's almost like this wall went away, this, this wall of where I could forget my past and forget my trauma. That wall was no longer there. And I had to start healing. I had to start having conversations about the things that had happened in my life, right? Um, and uh, it was interesting because while I was trying to heal my body and become a better, uh, you'll, you'll get a kick out of this, Erin. My goal was to wear, I have a favorite pair of shoes. And I said that every time I went to physical therapy, like I'm going to get back in my shoes. I'm going to wear those shoes again. I love those shoes and I will be wearing them. Um, and so I really worked very hard to, to get back, you know, walking and get back moving. Um, but in that time, I was able to find my purpose because I had to talk about my dad's suicide. I had to talk about my mother's suicide. I had to talk about the many times I had considered and attempted suicide. And the fact that I was not successful in any of those tries, um, I had the opportunity and a therapist who encouraged me to change my way of thinking. Instead of saying I didn't, I didn't succeed at dying by suicide, Instead, say, you know, I survived because I have a purpose and I'm just looking for God to show me what that is. Um, and so he did. So that's when I decided to do the thing that I love the most, which was travel and speak. I said, I'm going to go ahead and do this full time. I'm going to create a company so that I can monetize my speaking because it had been my ministry for the rest. Most of my life, I do it for free. Um, but and, you know, and I had an exit plan and exit strategy from corporate America but COVID, COVID kind of sped that plan up for me a little bit. It, it, um, in January of or February of 2020, was it 2020? Yeah, 2020, yeah. Um, my position was eliminated. And so I was promoted to entrepreneur and I had the, yeah. opportunity, to, <laughs> I had the opportunity to do this full time. And it has been nothing but a blessing. That is, you know, Matt, that is amazing how... How life he be let it work itself out. It's only about struggle, stress, strive, cause heart attacks, cause stroke, maybe contemplate suicide. Because we push so hard to make things happen when if you just learn to relax, God, the universe will guide your path. Absolutely. You know, I had I had sure I had a friend of mine tell me, he says, life is like a river. You don't need to help it flow downstream. You don't push it downstream. It'll flow by itself. So the trick for us is just to be part of the flow. Right. And, you know, really, it's so true. But, you know, you touch a little bit on the silence, the mm -hmm. shame that made you be quiet about something that was really, really ended up being a purpose. Yeah. But there's so much shame and fear in being open and authentic and real yeah. in Absolutely. today's society. We all look on social media and we look how perfect everybody is, but mm -hmm. not reality. Mm -hmm. There is a story behind that smile. Absolutely. There is a realism. It's authentic. And I think it's important. And I think part of what your story, what I have doing research on you is to stop the silence to make absolutely. it out. absolutely and you know what i want to mention a couple of things so um and it's not just the silence about uh mental mental illness right because um one of the things that i and i never told you the story but one of the challenges i had when i did uh come home after i got out of rehab i was still in a wheelchair 
Um, and it was very different because I would get in this elevator at this corporate office, but I'm in a wheelchair. So now, you know, I am, you know, I'm butt, I'm butt level to everybody else, mm-hmm. right? It's just, it was a very unfortunate kind of realization. Um, but what I also realized is that the same people who would have like small talk with me in the elevator before I had my stroke find it very difficult to like turn and have a conversation with me in a wheelchair. And so that was probably the first opportunity that I had to, I'm like, hi, you can still say good morning, even though I'm looking at your butt. It's fine. Right. Yeah. And so people in the elevator, we just kind of like <laughs> crack up laughing. Right. Because we have to be able to not just find a purpose, you know, in our lives, but we have to enjoy living it. Right. We've got to find joy in it. Um, and though some people do have that shame and that, you know, embarrassment when I don't have it, when I can stand on a stage in front of people and say, you know, um, here's what I went through. Isn't that funny? Like, isn't this crazy that this is somehow how it shows up in my life? Um, because it's not a sad story. It's a testimony. It's a testament of how we can be brought through the absolute darkest of times and and come out well on the other side. And so people need to see that we can still smile and laugh and have funny conversations, even though we've gone through some adversity, um, because now we can appreciate it that much more. Because I remember what it was like when I couldn't get up and, and move around and do the things that I love to do. I never saw me, uh, I, ever, I never accepted the fact that I wouldn't be able to do those things again, right? Um, and so I laughed through it and I smiled through it and I've learned to heal through whatever adversity comes my way. I know that it's on purpose and that I know that it will make me better eventually. Yeah, you know, it's funny you talk about being laugh, being able to realize life is too short to be too serious, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you let your plight, your struggle take a hold of you. And challenge you, make you not be a smile. You're going the wrong direction. Right. Just shift your attitude. Dwayne Dwyer, Dane Dwayne Dyer, a spiritual teacher you probably know, mm-hmm. said, change the way you look at things, and things you look at will change. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's so true. If you could look at your struggle with smile, I guarantee your struggle will change it into a purpose. Absolutely. It really will. I'm sure you and I both experience. Yeah, I'm a stroke survivor and a brain injury survivor. And it has become the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. I'm super proud of you. I love that you I love your platform. I love that you bring people on, have this very important conversation. Um, If we, with anything, whether it's a physical disability or a mental disability, um, the ones, the disabilities that we can't see are the ones we tend to stigmatize the most because we can't see them. So we tend to speak ill of them. Um, And so I think I have this unique experience of both being, you know, disabled physically and unable to kind of even self-advocate. I didn't even want to speak up for myself because I was in a bad situation. But what I learned through that situation and learning even now through my own healing, healing. Um, And and my healing, my PTSD diagnosis, though a lot of people don't realize this, is not from the childhood trauma. It is from some of the things I experienced in corporate America, right? So you never know what another person is dealing with. You don't know the kind of heavy luggage another person can be carrying. So um, even if you find it hard to smile for yourself, uh, sometimes that smile can change, change and brighten someone else's day. Um, Because you just you never know what someone else is dealing with and what they're carrying. And so my goal is to make somebody smile as often as possible, at least the once or twice a day. Um, And all the other things the universe just puts in line for me. So it's uh, it's intentional living. It's living on purpose and knowing that you're you're doing what God set you out to do. Oh, that's beautiful, honey. That's really beautiful. And living on purpose. If you out there have not found your purpose in life, you have not found what Sherry and I call why. Why are you here? I guarantee everybody out there in the world, I don't care who you are, if you're not doing your why, if you're not living your why, you're missing out life. Because there's so much fulfillment and so much joy in living your why. 
live your purpose, your true purpose. Uh, you know, I wanted to touch Rick Tansky's job now goes by quick. But I want to touch a little bit about the suicide because, as you know, as I told you in the green room, suicide is very prevalent in my community. In fact, I contemplated very seriously for the second time in life. Once before my stroke, due to some things I was going through, and then after I started laying in bed, I paralyzed. And I realized. Suicide was not the way, in fact, that's how man Chip Hazelhead, you and I both know, mm -hmm. is that I was laying there suicidal in bed. And I was trying to plan how I can my bed like carcass, in the woods or up ramp, in the closet where it came, came my 40 Smith and Wesson gun. Mm -hmm. and I was it. But then I began to listen to Jeff Hazelot tell me, I need to think bigger, think big, act bigger. Now my attitude changes my life, it changes everything. And it is so true. How you, how you look at things changes your life. And I think you and I'm experienced about that. But you know, I, I really want to, if people want to get involved with the helping, promote, or how do they get involved with your suicide movement? How do they uh, donate? How do, see, we have some viewers out there that want to get involved, be a partner with you. How do you do that? I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, you can absolutely find me on any of the social media platforms at Sherry James PMP. Uh, you can uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, you can look for the Creating Mental Wealth Show on uh, YouTube, and we'll have some some pretty good news about where that will be uh, showing up soon. But if you want to make donations and support the nonprofit, uh, visit us at 2020LivesChange.org. So that's 2020Lives change.org. Uh, we'd be more than grateful uh, for your, your um, support and your donations. What we're trying to do is to get this creating mental wealth uh, curriculum inside of schools so that we can teach uh, the, the next generation how to handle their emotions and to do so uh, prior to uh, rever reverting to self-harm, uh, suicidal ideations or violence. So uh, 2020 livechangeorg is where you can donate um, or reach out to me on any of my social media platforms and we'll be happy to uh, connect. I, you know, viewers out there get involved. If you're not the one that's a mouthpiece, I share it on myself. Your financial donation is involvement. You're just as as helpless, Sharon and I talking. So I encourage you to go to 2020.org. And if you're in a place you can now share this movement, this, this suicide portion of the movement, please do. We, we could use your help because yes. there's silence, there's a shame. And I'm so proud of you, Sharon, for getting out there and teaching the school children. That really is where it all starts. Mm -hmm. My dream is someday make stroke that way because stroke was being taught about. So many people have stroke not knowing what stroke is. Mm -hmm. But because in the schools and we taught the children they would know. They may not live it, but they'll remember when they start going weak on one side or begin to have the signs of a stroke. They may remember what was that? So kudos for you for going doing it to the children. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, Aaron. And thank you for this podcast. And thank you for this opportunity to share with your audiences the work that we're doing. You are also doing amazing work, sir. And so I'm so honored to be a part of it. I'm honored to be here to support you. And you know, whatever you need, if we have it, you've got it too. So well, you do show TV media to love you. So anything we can do to help you. Let me know. But you, you did say you were going to drop out about the new, what's happening out there. You said you were going to drop something. I did. You didn't forget it. You remember that, huh? Yes. Yeah, so uh, the Creating Mental Wealth Show, uh, we have a new executive producer in John Sally. Um, John Sally is, uh, you know, he's he's kind of known. A few, a few people know who he is. 
Um, but he is taking over the show um, and having conversations with some of those linear networks that we talked about so that we can have the show both on linear and local TV as well as streaming. So um, mm-hmm. that's really yeah. exciting news that we just got yesterday, actually. So uh, super excited to have the support of John Sally and uh, his organization um, and, and to make sure that we can get in front of as many people and save as many lives as we can. So, yeah. Thanks well, for that is really, really exciting news. Congratulations, Shirley. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. We're de- we're, we're, believe it now, we're out of time. We did it. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And remember, 2020.org. Help about if you didn't place to contribute to help them out. Sherry's moment is the word impact a troop. He's impacted me. Thank you so much for being here, Sherry. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Thanks. Set me on fire.